I'm excited to turn it over to our next set of speakers who will be sharing some on the ground efforts, um, incorporating some of the concepts we've been talking about today. And we'll hear first from the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan Foundation. And I will turn it over to Myra to start. Yes, thank you so much, um, Catherine. And uh, since 1980, the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan Foundation, we have been committed uh, to providing financial resources for uh, corporations, hospitals, universities, and community-based organizations to address health and healthcare needs. And included in that is adverse childhood experiences. And the state of Michigan, we rank 20th um, in the percentage of young people reporting two or more ACEs. And six of 10 of our young people have at least one ACE. Now, specifically for the state of Michigan, we found that 72% of young people with four or more ACEs reported feeling sad or hopeless, and that's compared to 17% of children with no ACEs. And then when we look at suicide risk, 46% uh, of youth with four or more ACEs considered suicide and then 21% of youth with four or more ACEs attempted suicide. And then in addition to that, we see our risk behaviors. And so 63% of the young people with four or more ACEs reported not using a condom during intercourse. And that is compared to 39% with fewer than four ACEs. And if we can go to the next slide. So we have some amazing programs that are addressing ACEs on the ground. And six, since 2020, we have awarded 25 grants, um, one of which you heard of at a previous uh, webinar, and that is the TRAILS, um, the Transforming Research into Action to Improve the Lives of Students. That was recently provided with a $50 million um, state appropriations from the state of Michigan to expand its program from the Detroit public school system and to bring that program statewide. Another program that we have is the Washtenaw Area Council for Children, and this is teaching young people at the age of three about body agency. And then in addition to that, we have a program with the Ruth Ellis Center, which is helping to assist LGBTQ plus young people that are experiencing housing insecurity. And today we have two amazing innovative programs that we're so glad are able to um, come and speak to you because this is really such an important thing to show the on the ground approach. So we've heard a lot of the, the theoretical and now it's time for us to hear about what's going on on the ground. And so the first that I'll introduce is a community university partnership and community university partnerships, they're so unique, they bring the combination of the research and then also the on the ground knowledge. And the second is a nationwide program. And this has been able to be replicated here in the state of Michigan. And previously it's been done in racial and ethnic diverse settings and then also in rural, urban and suburban communities. And first I will turn it over to Leon Alamin and also Radlisha uh, Sneed. And Radlisha is a a uh, professor at Wayne State University, and Leon is the founder and executive director of the MADE Institute. Thank you, Mark. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Leon El Alamin. So happy to be here. Um, I am the founder and executive director of the MADE Institute, and the MADE Institute is a community development reentry corporation that was established in 2015 to address issues um, that impact at-risk youth as well as returning citizens um, in, in, in different areas that in which they have um, found themselves to be faced with many barriers due to environment, home life, and so forth. Next slide, please. The MAID Institute provides transitional housing, life skills, peer-to-peer -peer mentoring and education, health and wellness, skill trades, construction training for returning citizens and at-risk youth. We also provide health and wellness and financial literacy. We use a holistic approach to recommend individuals um, who come through our program, at-risk youth or adults, back into the community who have been impacted by violence, mass incarceration, and other um, entities that 
distress them from being successful in the community. Next slide, please. Um, youth ages 16 to 24, uh, predominantly African-American families was our focus in this particular project. Um, all of youth participants are raised in low resource households. Um, and part of our recruiting strategy was to focus on Flint's North Side, one of the most hardest hit areas in, our, in the city of Flint and Genesee County that has also been impacted by the Flint water crisis and a slew of other things from violence and mass incarceration. I won't go too much into the statistics. I will let my colleague, Dr. Sneed, kind of um, address that aspect a little further. Next slide, please. Study rational. <clears throat> the lies of justice involve individuals often characterized, characterized by poor social ties, discrimination, health problems, and food insecurities. Justice involved often turns to community reentry programs for support after reentry. Reentry programs mostly focus on employment and housing. Can we introduce supporter health and wellness programs into community reentry programs was our focus with this particular program. Next slide, please. Program structure. So resilient workshops is one of the things and tools that we utilize individuals, um, grouping them in small groups, addressing the mental health, um, first aid training, getting them exposed to those resources, connecting them with mentors and other community systems. The purpose of the project for us was to really engage the young folks ages mostly 16, 24 and so forth um that was um and, and Flint came from Flint's north side to be really teach them how to be more resilient and to combat a lot of the social determinants that they're coming up against those who are um unconnected to like educational institution workforce um health and um services and things of the such who have been impacted by large scales of violence and mass incarceration was a, a main focus of the program through a, a multiple strategy, we were able to increase youth awareness of the impact that's repeated by exposure of trauma and violence and what that does to their health and overall well being. Next slide, please. Um, I'm going to let my colleague kind of speak to more of the outcomes and go back more into the data, but I would like to add also that. Um, one way we were able to, again, as far as on the program implementation side, was utilizing um, the health and wellness program that we were able to create, which the has like a nutritionist who teaches um, healthy dieting and eating habits and foods and things in which has a great impact on how they think and how they behave, especially those who have been malnourished and come from these environments that's impacted by violence, mass incarceration and things as such. Also, mentorship is a big part of the program. Um, gaining young folks' trust is critical. Before you can implement any kind of program, it's hard if you don't gain their trust. So we focus a lot on mentorship, exercising. These are little simple things that we found to be very effective when you're trying to curb impact of what we will have the opportunity to see about what ACES does to our young folks in these communities and so forth and other traumas and things that can have become barriers to their success. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Steed um, and I'm working with Leon and the Mada Institute to uh, implement health and wellness programs specifically um, among returning citizens that participate in Mada Institute programs. Um, and a lot of the work that we're doing is really focused on developing and implementing a physical activity and nutrition program that caters to the specific needs of returning citizens. Um, we are working in this program in partnership with Michigan State University Extension, um, which provides nutrition education. Um, we also have a partner um, that does urban farming education as well. Um, and a lot of what we're really focused on at this point is the feasibility and acceptability of implementing this kind of program among returning citizens. 
Um, and so with that in mind, we have a few implementation outcomes. Uh, first, we're very much interested in reach. Are we able to successfully recruit and retain returning citizens in our programming that are representative of the broader population of returning citizens in the greater Flint area? Uh, second, we're interested in fidelity. Are we able to deliver the program as intended? Um, and if not, what types of modifications are necessary in order to effectively deliver the program that we've designed? And then finally, as an outcome, we're looking at satisfaction. Is the program acceptable to returning citizens? Is this a program that people are interested in continuing to participate in over time? And what can we do um, in order to improve the acceptability of the program. So these are just some of the outcomes that we're focused on in our partnership with the Maid Institute. Next slide. Okay, thank you so much. And now we'll hear from uh, Leti Leticia Williams, who is a program director at Friends of Children Detroit. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Today, I'm going to share uh, the Friends of the Children to Gen approach and packing generational change in communities across the states, um, how our work uh, with our children affects the affects ACES and all of the uh, information that has come forward thus far in uh, this in today's discussion. Um, next slide, please. Okay, no, nope, we're, we're good. Stay there. Nope, go back. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Um, we help to make to break generational cycle of poverty, enrolling children between the ages of four and six and mentoring them through 12 plus years uh, in our program, no matter what. We accomplish this by applying our program model, which outlines a theoretical background of how our organization connects the daily work of our friends. Our model identifies five strategies, anchoring program services and outcomes uh, we experience success by teaching nine core assets through intermediate outcomes of school success, pro-social development, improved health, making good choices, and plans and skills for the future. As our mentees grow and excel in these intermediate outcomes over this 12 plus year uh, time span, they experience the long-term goals and outcomes of high school graduation, avoiding the juvenile justice system, avoiding teen parenting, enrollment, employment, and enlistment. Next slide, please. ACES directly touches our work as our children must have two or more ACES to enter in our program. Many of our mentees come into our program with uh, high risk factors, um, child high risk factors, and environmental risk factors as high as eight to 10 at such a young age. Um, we experience and see ACEs in our work through life stressors and critical incidents. Life stressors are those environmental or individual circumstances with a negative impact on our daily functions. And then our critical incidents, which are incidents that occur in a youth's life that puts them at serious risk and harm. Next slide, please. Our goal is to support children with the highest risk factors and the lowest protective factors. We employ full-time salaried professional mentors who we call friends. We make long-term commitments and we stay with them no matter what. We continuously assess, evaluate to improve our work. Each dollar, um, as some of our outcomes, each dollar invested in our youth returns $7 to the community. 90% of our youth go on to enroll in post-secondary education, uh, serve our country or enter the workforce. 83% of our friends' youth earn a high school diploma or GED, while 50% of their parents did not have the necessary support to graduate high school. 93% of our friends' youth remain free from juvenile justice system, while 63% of the parents have been impacted by the criminal justice system. And 98% of our friends' youth wait for parent, um, wait to parent until uh, after their teen years, while 85% of their parents started parenting during their teen years. Significant outcomes that we can uh, look to for our, our success and how Friends of the Children is making an impact in the 25 locations that we currently serve. Uh, next slide, please. 
So part of our program strength is in our two, gener two generational approach that we call two gen that impacts changes across generations, not only for the youth, but for their families by empowering them to move beyond poverty, foster care, the criminal justice involvement, and move toward health, well-being, and community. And some of the, uh, many of the instances and examples that have already been provided through um, other uh, panelists today uh, speak to how we create healthy environments in our home, with our children, among our families, and within our communities. Next slide, please. And so uh, I'll close with just a snapshot from our summer camp that was a couple of uh, uh, Saturdays ago where we, uh, a couple of kids jumped in the snapshot with us to take a, a picture with the ice cream truck. I think that was their second visit back, second or third <laughs> visit back that day. Um, and a fantastic time we had engaging our, our uh, community and our, our families as a whole. Um, and I'll close with this um, it, because it was best said by our national team, our work has ripple effects on their siblings, peers, neighborhoods, and their children to help break the cycle of generational poverty. Thank you today. <laughs>